when people speak of traditional knowledge, environmental knowledge, they mean acute insights about your connection with the land, often with an emphasis on survival. That's the force, the wisdom, that can be applied in conjunction with traditional Western science to achieve what needs to be done, in my opinion, today. How should we think about soil? Well, the first thing is that soil is not dirt. Soil is a very important part of ecosystems. When we take a handful of soil from a grassland, it contains kilometers of fungal hyphae, tens of thousands of different bacterial species, lots of invertebrates and insects, etc. So it's a very living system. Nina Sinequa, Indishnakas, Megase and Dotem, Bauting and Donjaba, Inveri and Dinda. This little forest here, uh, this Indigenous Food Sovereignty Garden, is 300 square meters. It has 900 trees planted in it. The little forest is um, it's highly biodiverse. It is um, beautiful. The trees are planted as babies. Um, they're planted in such a way where we are pretty sure that the soil will, the soil will support the, the coupling and partnership with the roots of the trees. So in returning these native species, the whole idea is that we're returning our relations to the land. And when that happens, not only like are the trees and, and other um, bio, biodiverse species coming, but it's also changing the soil because the soil is going to remember too. The soil is going to call back life that hasn't been here um, and that has changed with uh, the agricultural practices that have occurred here. When we think about soil, we should think about it as supplying our food. The basis of our nutrition as humans comes from plants and from animals that eat those plants. The plants get the nutrition from the air, from carbon dioxide, but there's lots of that. And they get the nutrients, the nitrogen and phosphorus, etc., and the water that they need to grow from soil. Soil is the foundation of all terrestrial life on the planet. We put in uh, lots of um, forest soil when we planted each tree. We had forest, mature forest soil from surrounding forests and put that in there because we know that in that forest soil, there's lots of microorganisms and those microorganisms are going to are going to partner with those roots. They're going to help those roots um, be resilient and grow. And those roots are going to couple. They're going to find each other and start to partner that way as well. With that partnership of roots and soil and microorganisms, there's a great, um, that, is, that is the health, that is the health of the tree right there. And uh, the idea of using some of that soil and some of that life to bring here makes spiritual sense. It's also, when you think about it, in at least at Anishinaabe Moan, insects and small beings, they're called manadunts or manadouche. And that's meant, manadu is like, the word manadu means like spirit. Manadunts, manadouche is like little tiny one. It's like, these are like the little spirits, right? They are like the ones that um, are gonna help with survival. So there's sort of that kind of idea to consider. It's, this is our mother and we're, we're taking parts to bring, to, you know, create this healthy soil for this forest. A healthy biodiverse soil is really key to um, being resilient to climate, both with heavy rains, potentially being able to um, hold water in the soil during times of drought, and also to um, have that really rich little ecosystem around each root that helps the, the tree grow. There, um, there's like 49 different species in that forest. We know that that contributes to climate resiliency. It also you know, contributes to um, you know, a healthy ecosystem 
we know that uh, with the way that we've done the preparation for the forest floor, that that soil is, is it's, it's, uh, it's a healthy uh, uh, ecosystem that those roots are going into and that over time it's going to um, really potentiate the health of the trees and the trees and the roots are going to potentiate the health of the soil. The health of the soil means that it's going to catch lots of carbon, right? Because the trees are going to be doing photosynthesis big time. And that photosynthesis is going to send that carbon down the soil. And then the soil is going to put out through the roots. And then all the mycorrhizae and the, and the microorganisms in the soil are going to work with that carbon. It's just a, a really beautiful balance that can happen. Some soils contain quite a lot of carbon. And that's why we came to this wetland today, because wetlands are flooded systems where the plants are growing. And as they die, the leaves and the, the, the stems, etc., are deposited on the soil surface. Here's a beautiful section of a wetland soil. You can see there's about 10 or 12 centimeters at the top, which is just organic material. There's a lot of carbon stored here in organic matter. And as you know, greenhouse warming is caused by carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Wetlands in particular contain large stores of sequestered organic carbon. And if we don't preserve them, in other words, if they're drained or if they're war they experience warmer temperatures, some of that carbon is going to be released back into the atmosphere. So one of the important things to think about is how connected you are to the soil. It's literally true to say that the breakfast you ate this morning depended on the functioning of a healthy soil, or should depend on it. it depends on whether it's been, your food has been produced by industrial agriculture or whether it's been produced in a more sustainable way. But the essence of it is, the more you realize that you're connected to the soil and that you're connected to the plants and that you're connected to the other animals, and that your existence is not just about connecting to those species, but your existence is actually dependent upon those species. And in fact, indigenous people and many others would argue, we are absolutely interconnected with our environment. It depends, we, it, it doesn't depend on us so much, but we depend on it to remain uh, alive and healthy. You know, I think the land is a, gives a lot to people. People will talk about that a lot. Um, about what they get from being on the land, you know, what they get from being having their hands in the soil, they're seeing the plants grow. People get a lot of different things, you know, from being here. And I see that as being part of that reciprocity, you know, the gifts that people bring and then they take something away, which is great, right? Yeah.